Crossy Roads. Do you remember that game? Well, I barely do. Oh, I have an idea. Why don't I try to remake the game from memory? What are you? An idiot sandwich. Hey, welcome to the devlog. If you don't know me, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Zag, and I'm a jack of all trades. I like games, music, and movies, and most of all, a challenge. So what is the one thing that combines them all? Well, you guessed it, and I don't have to say it. I've been using Godot since I switched from Unity, about two years now. I've built a gangbang simulator, it would appear. I can't see anything else that this game is useful for. I never really made anything cool or finished a game with a real win condition. That being said, I'm intrigued by Godot and the update it had a few weeks ago. 4.4. They added a ton of new things that make the usage of the engine way more enjoyable and added solutions to problems that otherwise took a lot of head scratching and cups of coffee. So let's stop wasting time and get into the devlog. So I started by asking ChatGPT for some ideas on iconic mobile games that are due for a professional remake. It spit out a handful of suggestions, and I eventually settled on Crossy Roads. So now that I have an idea of what I want to make, I did what any handsome, rational person would, and set a two-hour timer. Okay, I'll be honest, this was originally a video about remaking Crossy Roads from memory, with the catch being a two-hour time limit. But I had to do a McDouble back when I reviewed the footage over and realized I messed it all up. About one third of the way during the development phase, I pressed the wrong key and it switched my OBS scene. So instead of scrapping the whole video entirely, I decided to make this a devlog about just making the game. I began by trying to remember if Crossy Road was a 2D or 3D game. Then, after an embarrassing amount of time later, I settled on 3D and made a new 3D scene. Then, I went into the settings of the project and set an FPS limit to the runnable instance. Next, I needed a ground to walk on, so I made a static body, added a collider, and added a mesh instance. I made a plane as the mesh and added a material to it. If you're just trying to quickly block out a scene or make a game on a time limit for some reason, I like to use noise textures. Leave the main albedo white and add a color ramp to the noise texture. Enable seamless and pick the noise that looks best for your mesh. Pick the colors you want to use in the color ramp and enable trinopular on UV1. Then, voila, you get a simple, quick, and easy texture. When I was happy with the way the ground looked, I now needed a duck. Or is it a chicken? Like I said, I barely remember the game. So I went into Blender and added a bunch of cubes, scaled them down, and added subdivision modifiers. Since I didn't want to waste too much time in Blender, I exported the duck, and then imported the duck. Since the duck will be the main character, I added a character body node, added a collider, and a mesh instance with the duck as the mesh. Then, it was time for a script. I was on a time limit, so I asked ChatGPT to write one for me. It made a few mistakes and wasted my time, but eventually it did spit out something that worked. After I had something that functioned, it was time to add some luscious new terrain to the game. So I added a static body, a mesh, and a collider. Then scaled it and added more noise to make it look road-like. Not to be confused with roguelike. I'm glad I wasn't dumb enough to make a video about that genre. So now all I had to do was control D a ton of times to duplicate the road and make sure they were positioned properly on the grid. Now it was time to make the losing condition. Basically, if driving car equals hit duck, then level reset. So obviously I needed a car model. I spent no more than 60 seconds turning a cube into a van. I added a rigid body collider and the car mesh to the scene. Again, I had to make a script so that the van would drive forward at a constant speed. So time was probably getting scarce at this point because I made ChatGPT write a script that simply moved something forward. It thought I needed a script for a character controller still, so I was forced to just write the two lines of code myself. 
The van now moved forward, but we had a new problem, and this one wasn't gonna slide. I already had a plan for this though. The plan was to use two Area 3D nodes. The first would be the collider for cars that have reached the end of the road, and the second would be a marker for where the cars respawn at. I was fed up with ChatGPT because of the recent inconsistencies, so I just decided to speedrun the script myself. I made a signal that comes from the respawn area that detects if a physics body, such as the rigid bodies the van uses, and checks if the body has the group name car. Oh yeah, I added the group name car to all the van nodes, by the way. If the body does have the name car attached as a group, it repositions the car to the spawn area. To make it more modular, I added an export variable to assign the area spawner so that I can just simply control D a million times. Now it was time for the testing. It worked! So next, with the one minute of time I had left, I added tunnels to end the roads off nicer, and a few audio files I found on pixabay.com. I also had Suno generate a level song. Then time was up, and I wasn't sure how to feel about what I had done. I gave myself two hours to try and remake a game I had only played once in an arcade. How did it stack up to the real deal? Well, needless to say, it was interesting. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Regardless, after it was all said and done, I started to brainstorm some ideas that could make this project more fun and interesting. What about a power-up that was pulled by the vehicles, and if you collect it, you grow into this huge raging duck that stomps everything under its feet, causing mass destruction? What about a redesign of some of the models like the van and add variety to the land? What if, instead of an endless generated world, we have actual destinations in mind that drive a psychological story forward? Who knows? Maybe if this video gets 100 likes, I'll make another devlog on it. But until then, happy game developing!